rock stars, Eric Andres, your guitar sage here, friends. Today we're gonna talk about how to solo step by step. We've been doing this all week. Well, for is this the second day or the third day? It's the third day, right? Is this the second day? Shh, the third day. The you, third day. Right? You hush your mouth, pal. Um, sorry, had <laughs> the had the other video happening there. Uh, it's the third day, right? It's Wednesday. Yes, it is. And this is what we're doing, friends. We are literally learning how to solo, how to improvise, how to create melodies, how to jam, however you want to look at it, however you want to define it. That's what we're doing right now. We're taking the things that we know, things like scales, and we're playing them, little bits and pieces of them, over chords. Because in reality... That's how we talk. We talk in phrases. We don't need to use every single word that we know every single time. So why would we phrase that way, right? So we're learning about finding the tonal center. And then when we find the tonal center, that means what notes might we use? Because when you see Stevie Ray Vaughan, your favorite guitar player, playing all over the neck, they're not just randomly picking at notes. They're not randomly just letting their ear just let them know where to put their fingers go to go down on the neck. A lot of people do believe that, but that's just not true. What they've done is they've practiced and rehearsed and played the same licks thousands and thousands of times in different ways, just like we've been doing the last couple of days here. And so, but, but really it, it comes back to phrasing. You know, when we, when we phrase, what we're doing is we're saying something and it has a natural cadence at the end. Just like at the end of a sentence, it goes down, right? There's a natural phrase ending, and we do this when we're soloing, when we're improvising, okay? Here come our friends with the donations. Lee, thank you so much. Michael, thank you so much. I really appreciate that, my friends. So kind of you for you guys to continue to donate like you guys have been doing. Really helps keep the, uh, the lights on here. So literally, the lights on. Thank you so much. So that's what we're gonna do today, all right, my friends? Uh, what We're gonna do something a little bit different today, uh, something that is gonna get you to think even more. So we've been, we've been changing it up a little bit every day, right? And uh, so we're gonna do something that's gonna force you to think of phrases, okay? I'm gonna tell you about it here in just a second. In the meanwhile, friends, while we're getting all settled here, hopefully you got your guitars tuned up and all that good, good stuff. Uh, if you would, Give this video a like, hit share, share it out into the interwebs with the kids, where the kids are. They want to watch it too, you know. And also hit subscribe and the notification bell. Cool? Hey, You ready? Here we go. We're going to do it. We're going to have some fun. All right. Tux has joined me here. So you've heard me do things like this before, right? sort of thing, right? Where I'm kind of thumping away on a chord and then I'm kind of noodling a little bit here. Coming up with some licks, right? What if I only have an acoustic guitar? You're in the right place. Doesn't matter, acoustic or electric, you're in the right place, my friend. So what we're going to do today is we're going to learn to just hit a chord and then vamp a little something over the top of it, okay? Now this is something that you will practice at home, but we're going to do it together here a little bit. Okay, and it's gonna go something like this. If I hit a, a A chord, and uh, in this case I did, I hit E, and I was playing in E, E pentatonic. I mean, e, although I want you to see this right here, this action here, I'm still gonna lower this, uh, despite my ego. I'm gonna lower this just a pinchy pinch so you can see more of the guitar. 
that didn't really help that much. This, uh, this is what it's like not being in the studio. So, there we go. Does that work? That's a little bit better, maybe? I don't know. So what I did here is I was just playing an E chord, right? And then I played stuff out of the E blues scale. But I have this chord that I'm constantly going back to. Now, why do that? Well, I, I'm going to do that because what it does is it says, okay, chords playing, okay, say your thing. Okay, chords playing, say your thing. Chords playing, say your thing. And what I mean by that is I only have a split second to say something intelligent. And it's like if, if you've ever been speaking with somebody and they're one of those people that just dominate the conversation and they just fill everything up with lots of words and you're trying to get a word in, it gives you a lot of opportunity to think. You can just sit there and be like, then you can formulate something that you want to say, and typically when you do that, you're going to formulate something that's more ninja-like than the clown in front of you who's just going on and on and on and on and on and on and on. Make sense? So, we want to think about this in the same way. We got this chord playing, and while that chord's playing, we're establishing the tonal center, and then we can say something, but we only have a split second to say it. Maybe a measure, maybe two measures. However we want to set it up, we can do this, okay? And so what that forces you to do is, I should say not even forces you to do, what it allows you to do is it gives you a little, it relieves the pressure of you having to say something the whole time and gives you a moment in time to say a particular something. Like if somebody, you know, had a hood over your head back in the, the time when they would uh, hang people or chop their head off or whatever, right? And they'd lift the head, they'd lift the hood off. They'd say, what do you got to say for yourself? Right? And typically, you're going to have something great to say, hopefully. I mean, it's the last thing you're going to say, so it would be a good time to say something poignant, like, give me liberty or give me death, or whatever. So, uh, in the same way, we want to think about that for this one little moment in time. And guess what? All of soloing is this. All of soloing is this. But this kind of sh makes it to where we have to think this way. Make sense? Boom, chord plays. Now you got two beats. Okay, you're done. That's it. That's all you get. And so what that does is it makes us have to think about things. It makes us have to come up with bits and pieces, okay? Peter, thank you for the donation, my friend. So, for instance, we're using E major. We could use... Make sense? That is the E blues scale right there. And we got this E major chord right here. So if I wanted to, to do something with this, I might concentrate on only one or two strings. I'm not going to concentrate on three, four, five, six strings, all the different forms of the scale. I'm not going to do that. That wouldn't make sense because it's everything. I don't need that, right? I only need to say one, my one particular thing. I mentioned to, to this to, to you guys the other day, a child who might have availability to hundreds of words right when they're born, or not when they're born, but later on as a toddler or whatever, they might have availability to hundreds of words, but they're not going to say them all, okay? They're only going to say the words that they need. Similarly, as an adult, we have, uh, we're, we're privy to thousands or tens of thousands of words, but we don't say them all, all the time. We just say what it is that we need to say in that moment. This is the mindset that I want you to get when it comes to doing this, okay? You've got to get in this mindset of, you don't have to say a lot, but what you do say, make sure it's what you want to say. How do you do that, Eric? Well, we do it through ex experimentation. We do it through improvisation. We do it through practice. We do it through making mistakes and going, no, I don't want to do that. And then you don't do that next time, okay? We're building neural paths. Wow, when I go to that note, it sounds good. Boom, you get a little dopamine hit. Now, next time, you're going to be more inclined to hang on that note or to go to that little area of the neck that you got those good results from. This is all we're doing. We're whittling. Have you ever whittled? Sit there with something, you whittle, and you're like, eh, that's not it. And you whittle some more. Or working with a piece of clay. Not so much painting, because once you paint, it's there. But like something that you can go, nah, that's not it. Maybe working with Play-Doh and you do it again. You're like, okay, that's it. That's closer. And well, but it should be a little bit skinnier here. That's what we're doing, but with notes, okay? 
So for instance, when I did this bit here, I was just sitting on the porch and was literally like, okay, well, what can I do? Well, I love this Hendrix lick here at the beginning of um, Hey Joe. Right, that whole bit. So as I was doing this, I just threw that in there because it's one of my favorite licks in the history of all times, right? So, but I could also take other licks that I'm stealing from other places. We all, all guitar players, I just was uh, sitting down with Robert uh, Baker, who you guys may know and love. He's an amazing guitar player, amazing teacher online, and uh, we just did an interview actually just right before this, and we were talking about that, that uh, a guitar players, we share these licks. We steal, we share. Um, it's, it's been done since the beginning of time, okay? And so we're, we're doing the same thing here, but you're also developing your own stuff. So we're gonna experiment with this a bit. We're gonna, we're gonna do this a bit. So for instance, uh, one of the licks that I did here would be, um, well, this is straight out of the blues scale. Right, so if I said, well, number one, I played this riff, and I threw in that, that flat five in there, and I just resolved it on the E. It could have been anything. I could have gone, or I could have gone, or, you know. Could have been anything like that. Could have been. on that E, it's gonna sound pretty good. So that's another part of this whole equation that I want you guys to think about. You could almost play any note as long as you end on the right note. That being said, let's up it a notch. Let's stick within the scale. Let's just play the notes that are within the scale, but still land on that, on that, that sweet note on the, on the tonic, at least for right now, okay? Once you get this under your belt, then you can start delving into more chords and what have you, and it's still gonna sound amazing, okay? So, if I did this, if I said, um, let's see, what, what do I have? I got, so really I got, one, two, three, I only have, I've only got one beat to do these licks, okay? You could set this up however you want, but for me, what I did with this one was I only have, I've only got one beat. I got one, two, three. So really, we got one beat there. Uh, Kevin, thanks for the super kind donation. Great lesson, great teacher. Thank you, buddy. Kevin, super kind. Thank you. Keeping those lights on here, man. Keeping the kitties fed and happy. You could do this however you want. Uh, in this case here, I'm just doing one, uh, one uh, beat for a lick. So I could go, so for you, find out what an E is. Okay, here's an E. So you might go this, you might do this. Let's simplify it a little bit. You might go like this, you might go. that four times in a row totally fine right we want to learn and, and did that sound terrible that I did that four times in a row no right it sounded great a lot of times when when something is uh, a great quote people repeat it and repeat it and repeat it repeat it because it's truth right and this is truth here we're just repeating it that's all we're doing but let's vary it let's vary it up now well, another thing you could do right and you could do this with me is just think about ending on that E note. Let's try some other notes to end on and do the same phrase. Our original phrase. Right? You know, 
whatever, sloppy like I'm doing it, clean like I'm doing it, whatever. You could also slow it down. If that's too fast, slow it down. Remember, there is no right, this is art. So you get to do whatever you want. That's the cool thing about this. Do what you want. Slow it down to where it's right in the pace where you wanna be. Do it in the key that you wanna do it. But the whole point of this is you hit a chord, you do a little something, okay? So um, let's analyze some of the licks that I did here and you can see where it is that I got this stuff. This uh, first lick here, this, uh, that's straight out of um, hey, hey Joe by uh, Jimi Hendrix. And so I'm still just sticking right in the scale here. This other lick that I went, uh, I'm just kind of hammering that first fret, zero to one. That's just an old blues bit. love it. I do too. I freaking love that lick. How about this one? So this is going from two to two or zero to two on string uh, four, the D string. here is I'm feeding you little vocabulary words. Mommy, I got a poo-poo. Mommy, I'm hungry. Mommy, I need some water. Mommy, I got a boo-boo. Okay? These are little phrases that once we learn what they mean, it gets us something. We get the food. We get put on the potty. We get whatever it is. These are little phrases. We don't have to be speaking super intelligently. We're speaking and we're communicating. That's all we're trying to do here. And the sim more simple you keep it, the better off you're going to be, okay? So now I've just given you, in the key of E, several examples. I gave you that one. I gave you this 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 one. How about this one? This is... The blue scale, and the only thing I did is I said, starting on the A string, I said zero, one, two, and look what fingers I'm using. I'm using fingers one and two, and I take my third finger and play that E. So I go. sense mm, lights are going on right now folks are going oh I'm getting it. I'm getting it right yeah slow it down you're gonna get this stuff right so integrate it into your plan play it like 30 40 80 million times doesn't matter integrate it to where you're like okay makes sense to me now you're building that neural path you're sticking it in your brain and eventually, if you do it enough, it goes into your body, and now it's becoming part of you, okay? Just like, look, uh, I, heard, I heard Stevie Ray Vaughan say this. He said, if I think about what I'm doing, I'll mess up. That means that it's not coming from here anymore. It does in the beginning. Right now, with what we're doing, we're thinking in here, right? Analytically, we're like, okay, this is this chord, and this is this note, and this is why this works. But later on, once you do this enough, you can ask any great guitar player, they're not really thinking about what they're doing. I mean, they're, they're vague, like broad strokes. Okay, we're in the key of E, my guitar's tuned, uh, I'm playing pentatonic, whatever. But, but even then, they're not really thinking pentatonic when they're playing pentatonic. They're just playing pentatonic. But at first, we have to think about this stuff. And then it starts going into your anatomy, then you get, then you, you can actually, becomes part of you, okay? So now we've, we've added several licks here, so. Uh, So with any new lick, now that's too fast for you, slow it down. What you want to do is you want to say, okay, 
Let's take two licks and put them together. some little phrase to stick within our chords here and have some fun with this, okay? And the possibilities are endless. You know, I did this one. I went to... I just slid up. I could do that. But I like this. I like that sound. If I was a if I was a painter, I'd say I like that color. What other what other uh, permission do I need? I like that freaking color. Boom. <laughs> okay, you're gonna go. I don't like that color. I'm gonna do this one. <laughs> Boom. You're done. That's all the permission you need to do whatever it is that you want to do. Does it sound good? Boom. Good. You're done. So now what you want to do is you want to start taking these little phrases. Eric, I can't do this. Really? If you can talk, you can do this because it's the same part of your brain. You learned one word when you were a kid, mama or daddy, right, or whatever. Oh my goodness gracious, get over here, guy. People gotta see you. Look at this guy here, yeah, man. man just wow, get up, come around here somewhere. Right People here. gotta see you. I don't know if you saw my Instagram this morning, my friends, but this guy was playing some eruption. That's right, and, he, and his nan and pop-up just came here <laughs> <laughs> of course, he needs something more than just the uh, more than just the Captain America. Uh, is this Captain America? It's Captain America. Captain yeah. America. Uh, pajamas and the mask, but now he's got the shield, the mighty plastic shield. That yes. The, yes. With a store on it, like my outfit. That's on right. here up here. That's right, buddy. Wow, you so good. I love oh, you. I really Love you, Go defend the universe. I love you, buddy. Go no, defend gonna, the universe for us. I'm going to hit the rest of the ball, okay? Okay, bud. I'm going to hit it with this shield. Okay, bud. I love you. I love you too, guys. <laughs> I, love I love you that kid. Too. I, love I, I love you, pal. I love you so much. Okay. <laughs> Roma says, save us. He's coming. He is coming. <laughs> Right? Oh my goodness, that little dude. Such a such a such a sweetie, man. So fun. He's major fun age right now. Golly, they're all fun. All the ages are fun, but he's just so much fun right now. Okay, so does this make sense? Okay, that little kid, he did not learn to say all that that he just said on day one. Neither did you. We learned one word and then we learned a second word and after a second word we learned a third word and a fourth word. That's happened to every single body who learned how to speak. And for every guitar player, they learn that first chord, and then they learn that first note, and then that second note, and a second chord, and a first phrase, and a second phrase. And that's how it's happened since the beginning of time, and will happen till the end of time. Amen. So we know that we got to do this step by step, right? Cool. Got it? So now that's all you're going to do, is you're going to take some, some chord, and let's make this real easy for you, okay? So I did something that was a little bit longer, but let's go, let's do this. Let's go, um... Uh, let's just, let's see here. Go. Let's do this. What we're gonna do, Climber, thank you so much. Michael, thank you so much for the kind donations. Thank you for letting us meet your son. So cute. Thank you for teaching and all you do for us. You're so welcome, Climber7565. And I've seen your name so many times in my chat. Uh, and I know you are a, you are a lifer, so thank you so much, Climber. So kind, uh, Michael. Thank you, friend. Michael Carey. Thank you. So kind. So what we're gonna do is this. Let's go. Just choking the chord, either left or right hand doesn't matter. What I'm doing with my left hand is laying my hand as gently as a feather on the strings. Right? I always think about it like a sponge, like a. Just a sponge, just muting the strings. 
You're not pressing down. I ain't doing that. That sounds weird. Don't do that. That's what it does in my face every time. So don't do that, please. Just do this. Go. Nice and light. See? Easy. A baby could do it. It'll take you some time to do it, though, okay? Because you were once a baby. All right. It's getting weird in here. So what I want you to do is this. I want you to, go, I want you to think like one, two, three, four. You could literally sing this. This is called scatting, by the way, and jazz players love to do this, jazz singers. But it's literally the same thing, and it's a fantastic way to, oh, really good, good, the synapses are, are going, we're getting light bulbs coming on, yeah, appreciate the baby steps as a newbie, it really helps, good. I tell you what, the foundation and the baby steps, they help everybody, even, even the pros, for sure, you know? Um, so, that's what we're gonna do, is we're, like, you can just, if you wanna practice that idea of just the timing part, and you don't, you're like, ah, I'm playing the lick, but then I forget about the chord, then just do this, go, one, this would be step one. This would be the easiest one. Just go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. That's step one. If you can't do that, three, four, then I would just say count one, two, three, four. But hopefully you can go one, two, three, four. One, two, three. The next step you're going to go is go one. Ba, 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 da, 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 da. Hum something. I don't care what it is. You don't have to hum what I'm doing, but just something, you know. Or sorry. Four. Just making stuff up. You know what I mean. Uh, if you're wondering how to make stuff up like that, we'll just listen to more blues. Also, play your scale. Go. You'll get used to the sound after some time. The pentatonic sound or blues has a very specific sound, and just get used to that. Okay, but where you're scatting is where. The lick's going to be. Then start very simply. So go, two, three, four. So you got that part down. You got three beats to add a lick now. You could go. You could do that three times if you wanted to, or you could just put one long lick in there. sense I'm still hitting that chord on that one every single time so why am I showing this to you I'm showing this to you to make you independent I say it all the time some people think I'm being a hard ass it's not that I'm being a hard ass it's just that me coddling you was is not gonna help you you've been coddled your whole life you had the pampers and the powder on the hiney and the mommy loving you and everything else now it's time to get out there and do this stuff and to rock right so the only way we can do that is for me to get you and push you into that position into that area so that you can rock so that you can do this stuff for yourself um, and so that requires you uh, be, number one believing in yourself you got to believe that you can do this and two making it to where okay boom it's time for me to play and i want you to be able to uh, to do this on your own like i love that we can do this together and we can do the call and response and i've been getting so many beautiful emails from you guys um and i love that uh, so many beautiful emails that you guys are getting this. But what I want you to be able to do is I want you to be able to, right after this broadcast, I want you to go sit on the front porch with the E chord and go, oh my God, I'm coming up with some bad-ash 
licks, which you will be, because it's inevitable. It will happen if you lean in that direction. Dan, thank you so much for the donation. So kind. Dan uh, Stiverson. Beautiful. Thank you, buddy. So again. <laughs> I'm just making stuff up as I'm going, literally. But you'll notice it's, very, it's similar stuff, right? So it's kind of like I'm going, um, you know, people go, uh, Johnny bit the dog. Johnny bit the dog. Johnny bit the dog. Johnny bit the dog. And when we emphasize things in different ways, it kind of gives the phrase a different meaning, even though we're saying the same exact thing, but we're emphasizing different notes. And this, it's similar to that in that we're playing a lick, but we're emphasizing doing some different things there. David, thank you so much. Back into it after 40 plus years of hibernation, now 65 and working with a six string acoustic electric and a 12 string. The effing F chord is killing me. Signing up for UGS Pro, lifetime tomorrow. Beautiful, David. I love that. Thank you so much, and I'm so glad that you're going to be with us. Uh, we're having a blast in there. We're learning a ton. Um, so, yes, when you're in there, hit me up, and I will personally say hi to you. Thank you so much, David. Thank you for the kind donation. Mark, thank you for the donation. You guys are helping keep the lights on, helping the crew stay with me. They haven't left me yet. Thank you, Jason, Mike, and Emmy. They haven't left me yet, and that's partially due to you guys liking these videos, sharing these videos and the donations and everything else because we can keep the lights on if we're doing that. So really, really, thank you so, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Okay, beautiful, here we go. So, um, now let's take something else. Let me, let me take, I want you guys to understand how easy this is because it's not difficult. I know if, if you're getting it already, then you're going to say it's not difficult. And for those that don't get it, you're like, it's difficult. And it, you might even throw the word impossible in there. Please don't do that. And please don't say, I can't. Just stop it. Stop it with those negative words that are lies. Don't lie to yourself. If you lie to yourself, who else are you lying to? Don't lie to yourself. Uh, can't and impossible, you probably mean challenging. Or I don't got it yet. Ah, those are fair. I don't, I don't have it yet, Eric. That's fair. You'll get it. Uh, okay, so let's do this one. If I said this is my target note in E, and I got three beats to get to that E using my scale notes, how can I do that? Let's try it. It can be simple like that. says I'm doing you don't have to do that many notes etc etc but you get the idea make sense cool yeah 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 cool all right let me know if the lights just went on for you guys give me a yes if the lights just went on for you and we're gonna be hitting 600 here soon because you guys are sharing this and because you're liking it thank you so much okay my problem isn't knowing where the notes are but my moving my fingers fast enough to make it faster Evan fast number one is subjective Okay, you want to know fast, talk to Ingve Malmsteen. And I bet you Ingve Malmsteen doesn't think that he's, that he's playing fast enough. I bet you he's practicing right now to try to get faster. Fast is subjective, number one. And number two, you know what to do about fast. You play accurately. Well, Eric, that's the problem. I'm not playing very accurately. Well, you know the solution for that too. It's always practice. But Eric, I don't have the time. Okay, well then you need to settle for mediocrity. Not being ugly, it's just truth, okay? Um, if, if you don't have the time to practice, you don't have the time to practice. Like, let that go. Let that part in your life go so you're not beating yourself up. But if you really do have the time, which most people, they know they've got the time. They're probably just binge watching too much of whatever or doing whatever with their time where they're wasting it or spending it in other areas, but they want to improve at the guitar too. You know this. It's basic math. 
can't, if you're watching, if you're binge watching, you're not playing guitar. If you're, watch, if you're playing guitar, you're not binge watching. Uh, my wife which wishes that I was binge watching, but I'm not doing it anymore because I got too many things to do and I'm having fun not binge watching. Uh, nothing against it, but for me, it's not where I'm at. John, thank you so much for the kind donation, buddy. Love that jumping uh, pair. Beautiful. Okay, so you know what to do. It's just really all about about the practice. RDB, thank you. Hey, if everyone gave at least two bucks for a 35 uh, lesson, we'd do the math and uh, will you do the math and guys and gals? Yeah, thank you so much, RDB. So kind and I appreciate you. Um, I appreciate you letting folks know. Yes, indeed. Yeah, it's always about slowing it down. Okay, you ready to do some uh, some some jamming here together we'll, like we did yesterday? You want to do that? Good. Byron, thank you. Lunch money. Everybody needs it. Enjoying the videos. Beautiful. Thank you, Byron. Super kind, friend. All right. Let's do some. Let's do some jamming. Now, you could do this with anything, too, really quickly before I get into that. We could do it with A, you know, figure out... You know, I like to keep the scale open. I mean, I could come up here too, so maybe I will. Maybe I'll do that. But if you keep it open, now you're not having to slide. And so you're not going to have as much room for error, okay? You can do it with a pick. Do it without a pick. Doesn't matter. Um, sometimes I will intentionally not use a pick, especially in an area of the neck that I need more help with, okay? Because if if I don't have the pick, it makes me a little bit more humble in that I'm not just going to go jumping for certain things and I have to do a little bit of searching. And if I'm using my fingers, then I'm, I'm, I'm not as uh, inclined to just rip out a lick as opposed to, you know, maybe just playing, just searching for what notes it should be. Make sense? So if we did this with A, I'm, I'm going to take A. And I'm going to play the A blues over the top, A blues scale. Okay, A minor blues scale is the one I just want to choose. So I'd go. That sort of thing. Okay, you can do this yourself. Slow it down if you need to. Key doesn't matter. What, as long as whatever key you're playing in or whatever chord you're playing in, you've got the appropriate scale. That's all that matters. Okay, Darren, thank you so much for this super kind donation, friend. Beautiful. You guys rock. Man. Woo. Okay, now, do, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Gotta listen to me the whole way through. You've got two choices, paths that we can go. This is like choose your own adventure right now, okay? If you want me to continue with what I'm doing right here with the whole one chord thing, put the number one. If you want me to jam like we did yesterday where we, where we got the jam track and I play a lick and then you play a lick, then put numeral two. So number one is the very simple, just playing a chord and then I show you the thing. And number two would be uh, playing to a jam track, not to a jam track, but I'm putting a looper down and, and I'm jamming, okay? So let me see those results here. Oh, more ones, actually. And actually 142 in there, okay? 142 came up there. Okay, I'm not a human calculator, but I'm thinking that there are more ones than there are twos right now. So let's continue on with this. Let's continue on with this. It's almost half and half, but okay, let's do it. Let's, let's continue on with this, okay? And I'll show you like how I was thinking. Now, okay, here's a fun little way. Let's do this. Let's, let's uh, for, for, for those twos that are in the house and they're like, yeah, I want it to move a little further, a little quicker. Let's do this. Let's, let's do a little hybrid. How about that, okay? I like to do a fun little thing like this. You guys have heard me do this before, right? <laughs> I'll 
speed it up here. to do that now this one gets a little bit tricky in that what we got to do is we got to keep something going on the whole time okay now we can do any hybrid of this if you want uh, if you want to continue on with what we did earlier where we just hit a chord and we do this <laughs> So they say it, Eric's putting some stink on it. Yeah, right. So if we wanted to, uh, if we want to take that same thing. If we wanted to do that, if we wanted to go. Let's see. How can we do this? We could go. that too you know but what I'm doing here is I'm thinking about the pentatonic scale uh, here on is this a funking away there on the old A, just kind of you know doing a little mute you don't have to mute it if you don't want to I've got videos on that though you your guitar stage muting if you want to search for that on YouTube so I'm just kind of thumping away here and then what I'm doing is I'm taking uh, this kind of higher uh, form two of the pentatonic scale and I'm kind of noodling with it. Here's an A. This is all the soloing that we did the other day, right? Here we are at frets eight and ten on strings two and one. Eight and ten, frets eight and ten on strings two and one. Make sense? Cool. Uh, Doug, thank you. Great stuff. Recent UGS Pro. Woo! Woo! Is there a section on this? Really? Yes, there is a whole bunch on this. Really need more work on staying in time and counting while playing. Being aware of time. Doug, yes, there is. Uh, minimalistic Blues, uh, the Blues Primer, the Mastery of the Blues, Beginner Section, there's lots. Just search blues inside of UGS and you'll be inundated with all sorts of amazing videos that are going to help a ton. Okay. Yes. Lots, lots inside of UGS. Tons. Okay. And more to come. Indeed. So, um, you know, for this, if you're not used to finger picking, then this may be a little bit more difficult for you. But either way, you could continue to, to do what we're doing uh, with, the, with the one chord bit, you know. What I'm doing here is this is an A. I'm plucking away at that A. This is an A. And I'm 8, 10, 8, 10. And that's all I'm working with. I might bend. I might bend those, but I'm but to start off, I'm gonna really center around that A there. So right. fast for you, slow it down. Just thump away at that, right? It's going to take a little getting used to, but... Now this... This is the third. This is the minor third. And this guy always wants to be bent. Even if it's just a teeny bit, it always wants to be bent. 
Make sense? Yay, our recycling guys are finally coming through here. I've got like 700 recycling bags inside of the friggin' garage. Thank you, recycling guys, for deciding you're gonna randomly pick stuff up now. Good, after two months. Did I mention that I have a garage full of recycling bags filled with recycling stuff and they haven't been picking it up? Cause you know. Anyhow. Here's my hey. So, um, so you could do this. You could just go. Whoops. That can be a little bit tricky too if you're trying to keep that bass note going at the same time every time, but that's a whole nother enchilada which we're really not gonna get into today, okay? And I may stray away from this a little bit because that's that's gonna freak you guys out. Let's continue on with the, um, well, let me analyze some of these licks here so that they make sense to you so you can noodle with them a little bit and then we'll go back to the one chord thing and then we're gonna do some, some actual jamming together. We're gonna do both. So the ones and the twos, you both win, okay? So, you know what I'm doing here? Here's my A. Go into the flat seven. This is a the third. Always likes to be bent. And what you want to do is you just want to experiment. Come up with stuff. See if you can come up with your own licks there. Okay. Now, um... Just starting the lick on the A, but I give it a little bit of sauce by the hammer on there. I could have just started off, could just done, done that, but that's not as cool as, is it? No, it's not. Okay, then, and then I just kind of brought the phrase up, but I resolved it on the A again. Resolved on the A. Resolved on the A. Then I did this. I'm kind of messing with the tritone there. The tritone, also known as the flat five, is the note that makes it sound bluesy, but in the way that I'm using it here, it sounds kind of sinister, right? These are double stops, and so in this case here, I got my first finger at the 10th fret, my third finger at the 12th fret, the first string and then I'm going so my first fingers not moving I'm just going from 12 to 11 on that first string um. now when I went down here I did here is I'm resolving to the same A that I'm thumping away on but I did this little that's my flat five and my five Here's my third likes to be bent and resolve to the A right Now this, now that bit there, I'm just kind of messing with some bends. But again, that, that bend, I could have just gone. Or, um, I could have just gone. I don't like that. I like that bend. A favorite lick of mine is kind of wiggling into that, that flat five there, that. 
right? Sounds dissonant. So I go. Make sense? Okay. All right. Let's get into now for the twos. Let's get into more of what we talked about yesterday, okay? Let's see, we did D minor, we did C major, we did some major, we did some minor, we did uh, A, we did E just now, we did, um, maybe let's do some B minor, okay? Let's see. Let's go, um, let's see, uh, yeah. Dan, thank you. All your lessons have been quite useful. Still have a long way to go. Thanks. Dan, me too. I got a long way to go too. So we're in it together, brother. We're all, we're all on a continuum, right? The guy who's just starting to play today, the 10 million people who are just starting today, 10 million, not 10 million, but the thousands of people starting guitar today are all starting at the same place. Whether they're one years old, no one's starting at one, but let's say they're four years old, whether they're starting at four, whether they're starting at 104, they're all starting right there at the beginning. That's okay. The people that have practiced this much are right here in the spectrum, and the people that have practiced this much are right here, and that's literally how easy it is. You get to choose where in that spectrum you wanna be, how much you wanna practice. I get the question all the time, how much should I practice? And I say, how good you wanna be? I know how good they wanna be, they wanna be freaking awesome. But what they're looking for is they're looking for, this is the, this is the minimal amount you need to practice to be this good. It doesn't work that way. You want to be this good, you have to practice this much. If you want to be this good, you only have to practice this much. It's that, that much math. It's so easy, okay? Okay, so... Um Let's do that one, okay? Um, that one's a fun one. Uh, let's do this. Does that work? kind of blues it's more reggae than anything but but we're going to be doing b minor yes correct b minor and uh so our pentatonic scale or our blues scale is to me it's just so easy if you want to complicate things then use whatever scale you want to use but i'm telling you the pentatonic scale you get your hands you get your mind wrapped around that boom you're gonna get it okay so pentatonic is this here we go you ready First finger is going to be all over this seventh fret, every single string. And so you're going to use, I want you to think per finger, each finger gets a fret. So we don't have to talk about the frets anymore. We can just say, get into the seventh position, meaning your first finger is behind the seventh fret. And then you're going to play fingers one, four, one, three, one, three, one, three, one, four. One, four. Make sense? Let's do this again. One, four. One, three. 
one three, one three, one four, one four. Now if we want to throw the flat five in there, we go one four, one two three, one three, one three four, one four, one four. Okay, that easy. Now, so let me see here. Let me let me. You want to try some longer phrases? Let's see if we can do some longer phrases. I don't know if we could use this this one for that, but let's see what we got. Um. That's how we're gonna do it. So So four measures. Make sense? So so up until now we've done just like a measure a piece or two measures a piece. Now we're doing four measures a piece because you guys are bad ashes, okay? Uh, hardcore, hardcore mortal. Oh, I thought it was metal yesterday. Hardcore mortal. Sorry about that. Hardcore mortal. Isn't that the same as B? So there's B. The B is the tonal center. That's the note, right? But is it B major? Right? Or is it minor? So that's the difference. So in this case here, it's what I'm playing is B minor pentatonic. So some people will just say B pentatonic. Technically, B pentatonic would be B major pentatonic. Because when we, when we say G or A or B, what we mean is G major, A major, B, G, B major. Okay? But when we're talking about minor, we almost always will say minor. Well, we always say minor. We should always say minor, 100%. You, when someone says we're in the key of B, it is assuming that you're in the key of B major. It's not assuming that it's left unsaid or that we might be in the key of B minor. When someone says B, we're in B major, okay? But we could say well, we have a tonal center of B, but is it major or minor? Like, what's the flavor? So in this case here, this is B minor, okay? So seventh fret, here we go. And what we're going to do is I'm going to play a longer phrase. Now remember, as long as you're playing within the scale, it don't matter. You play whatever you want. And for those advanced players here, do what you want anyhow, because what I'm doing is probably going to be too slow for you or maybe not interesting enough, so feel free to really do your thing here. Let yourself, let your light shine, okay? What I want you to do here, we're going to start with this. We're going to start with frets 10 and 12. 10 and 12, 10 and 12 on strings 1 and 2. Here's string 2. Here's um, string 1. So 10, 12, 10, 12, 10, 12, 10, 12. That's all we're doing. We might bend. Okay, we're gonna do longer phrases here. You ready? Here we go. Listen, because here's my phrase. It's gonna go like this. Actually, let's go, we're gonna go. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, and you. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Okay, here we go. Here comes me. Here comes you. Cool. Thank you, climber. Let's play him a few times. Embellish him if you want. Exactly like I'm doing. Anything you do is gonna sound good if you're in the scale. We're just embellishing a little bit. Ooh, that one's cool, right? Yet. You gotta go for what you're trying to do. 
Here we go. Got it, Jeff. Call and response. Yes, sir. up, which sounds cool. Right? like it, Larry. Ooh, change it up on you. Just go for it. It's all about going for it. It's alright if you mess up. I mess up a lot. It happens. I should stop saying that. I mess up. I've messed up. Listen to me. It is okay if you're like, wait, wait, wait a minute. I didn't, I didn't hear what you said. I didn't. I can't do it. Dude, go for it. Get out of your own way. Get out of your own freaking way. And if you don't, get out of your own freaking way. Get out of your own freaking way. Get out of your own freaking way. I can't say it enough times to you. If you're like nervous and you're like, ah, oh, but I'm not hearing exactly. Don't worry about it. Okay. This is what I'm saying. Do you think that Stevie Ray Vaughan's like, oh, I hear a wrong note? No, he's not like that. If you want to be like Stevie, be cool, man. Did you see him on stage, man? He's like, he's like, he's like this, man. I was high as a kite, but, um, but nonetheless, uh, he was cool, man. He wasn't even look, not even thinking, right? You will get like this. Now, what I'm telling you here is, go for it. You've got to step out there, okay? This is the time to do it. Not on stage the first time right? Step out right now. Hit the wrong notes right now. Go for it right now. Experiment right now. You're not going to mess up, right? Bob Ross would always say, happy mistakes. I've been compared to Bob Ross a lot, which I love that guy, so that's fine. Him, thank you so much for the kind uh, donation, buddy. As per always, uh, coming in with the donation. So kind. Thank you, bud. All right, we're going to keep going on this, all right? So now, um, 
yeah, if, if you don't know what I'm playing or I'm playing something light and you kind of miss it or whatever, as long as you're in that scale, you're going to be fine. Go for it. And I guarantee you, I guarantee you that you're going to play something and you're going to surprise yourself. And that is a massive dopamine hit. You're like, whoa, I just did it. Lights go on and you're like, party time, right? So that's great. I can't tell you how many times I've been in the studio and I'm recording myself and I go for a particular lick and then I'm like, what, what was that that I just played? I like that. And then I go to duplicate it and I'm like, well, that's not even in the scale or whatever. I messed up. And, you know, uh, Melissa calls them uh, happy mistakes. She says, you know, when you... When you're playing and you're writing and you hit the wrong, she says it on, on piano all the time, she'll hit a chord that's the wrong chord, the wrong chord, and then it turns out to be the right chord, right? But how would you, have, if, you if you were so apprehensive, how would you have come up with that? So you gotta be just like willing. It's just like love, man. You get it, gotta get out there. You gotta, gotta, gotta make yourself vulnerable. You can't make yourself vulnerable and not vulnerable at the same time, okay? Make sense? Okay. All right, so now we're going to add this this note. No, are we going to do that? Let me let me tell you. Hold on. Yeah, that's what we're going to be doing. This note right here. Right? The 11th fret of the G or third string. And I'm going to slide up to it probably a lot like that. That's our target, and so uh, it doesn't matter. People say, well, what, what, no, do you slow down? What fret are you sliding up from? I don't care. Slide from there, slide from here, slide from here. It doesn't matter. Go, just do your thing. Right? What would Stevie do? I'm gonna get a, I'm gonna get a, a little bracelet. What would Stevie do? That's what Stevie would do. He wouldn't think about it, okay? I don't want you to think about it either. So here we go. Ready? Here we go. Here we go. Two, three, four, one, 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 two, three, four. Here I go. Might be a little bit, a little bit much. Let's do that a little bit easier. Again. tools, yeah? Someone's saying to add, to add some comfortably numb licks in there, okay? So, let's, let's think about this song. So, uh, let me think about, uh, let me think about that for just a second. Um, different chord progressions it's not going to work exactly but we could um, like that's something that that Gilmore would do 
And let me tell you what I'm doing there. So the B pentatonic. The B minor scale. So something that Gilmore would do is he'd bend, he'd bend that two into the three. He'd do that a lot. And we could resolve it into the B. So let's try that. of it every time. Yeah, if we wanted some Santana, he might go... Oh, sorry. <laughs> Maybe he wouldn't do that. Let's see here. Uh... gonna have a different tone obviously that's more of a more of a Santana than Gilmore Changing it up. But again, doesn't matter what you do. Okay? Let's come back up here. Thank you, Brandon. Thank you, Autumn. You're so kind. I'm embellishing it every time just a little bit. Good. Three days getting smoother. Good. What? Just try it. It's a pull off. Here we go. No, the BB, the BB box is up one, but it would be in a major. We can't do it on this one. You like it? Like that one, Jim? Isn't that nice? Yeah. Do your own thing if you, if you don't, if you can't play that. It's okay. Just do your own thing there.
Notice that we're ending on the B every single time. It's a great way to think about staying, staying within the sound there. Say it two, three, four times. Here we go. Yeah, there's pull offs and bends and all sorts of stuff happening there. Anything, anything there. To a couple questions and uh, we'll keep going okay so do you try to begin or end the link with the same note from the chord yes I do or you know like if I'm like if you notice that's the B that's the key that's the key we're in so I'll go so either I'm sliding into it hammering into it something like that and then usually coming back around to B, no, well, later, well, watch this. B, B, B. <laughs> so it's like three times there. But any, anytime you end that phrase with, with the, the to, to, tonic that you're in, that's gonna sound great. Yeah, you notice I'm brainwashing you into, into sticking around to the, the tonic here, okay? That's what I'm doing, okay. Amazing how much music you can make with just a few notes. Thank you, Stavosaurus. Got it. Because that's a that that right there, friends, is a light going on. Yes, indeed. That's what I'm saying. You do not have to, to have a lot of notes here to do this, right? Here's a solo. <laughs> fun just boom 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 right there on those really one two three four or five I use that guy and I'm bending up whole step and a half step literally been picking three notes all morning and this is man if I could just get anything across to you guys it's that you don't have to get complicated in fact it's more important in the beginning that you speak intelligently with just a small amount of words as opposed to filling up a bunch of words, you know these people, right? I do. I got one friend, love him to death. Love him to death. He was a hardcore Christian buddy of mine. Now he's hardcore atheist. That's his new religion. He hates when I say that, but it's his new religion. And uh, who's not? I don't believe in anything. Nah, you believe in nothing. That's what you believe in. But uh, anyhow, I digress. And he and I will will talk sometimes, but that guy will talk in so many circles and this and that and the other thing and just at the end of the day, he doesn't really say anything, but he, boy, he sounds, sounds authoritative when he says it, but you're like, you're not even moving the needle any, you know what I mean? I would much rather listen to a child. I love the guy. I don't hang out with him so much anymore because of that, because we just, 
Anyhow, uh, I'd much rather listen to a child who's so pure of heart, tripping over words and everything. I'd rather listen to a child or spend time with a cat who isn't saying a dang thing because the cat's just resonating with love. You know what I mean? Rather than, than some blowhole who's just blah, 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 blah. Same thing, think about with your, with your own playing. If you can think about things simply, look, there's nothing wrong with a verbose player. I love them. Um, there's no, there's, in fact, there's nothing better. Well, I mean, Stevie Ray Vaughan was very verbose. But he also sometimes would just sit there and he would teach, do this. He'd go... Wind a note out. Whoa, whoa, what key am I in? Sorry. Sorry, I was in the wrong key. I mean, he would just wind something out, just wind it out, right? But then at other times, man, he was all over the place. So, uh, contrast, right? You know, without the black, we don't have the white. Without the white, we don't have the black. Uh, we need... Uh, the reason black and white pictures look cool is because we're used to colors so much. And then when we saturate colors, that's cool because we're used to colors just being like what they are right now. So contrast is everything when it comes to music. Uh, that pull, yin and yang, uh, uh, tension and release, just the whole nine yards, okay? Yeah, okay? Good, good, good. All right. All right, so what else? Um, the Den Denise had to stop hanging out with my dad because of negative vibes towards everything. I know what you mean, Denise. It happens. It sucks when it's family. When it's friends, it's easier. I've cut a ton of friends out of my life, uh, and I know some people go, that's mean, that's just mean. What you really should do, Eric, is, is you should allow them to bring you down because that's going to make the world better. If you just allow them to be just mean to you, then that's going to let the world be so much better. Hmm. No, it's not. It's going to bring me down and then I can't be a uh, light for other people. So get those negativo stevos out Oh, you life. If they're your family, I don't know what to tell you there. I mean, I obviously have family that some of them think negatively and just got to deal with it. You know, everybody's in different places and we're growing in different places. So part of it too should be that you, you know, you allow them to work on your spirit and maybe having grace in those sorts of things. I think that's what I, that's how I look at it. Paul, thank you. Science will set you free. Do you ever wear your tinfoil hat when you watch Gaia? <laughs> Paul, what I love about science is that it tells us the things that we knew thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago. So I love it for that, not mocking science at all. Paul, thank you for the kind donation starting off. But science is kind of a funny thing because we are now in the science, scientific materialism age, which is dying, by the way. You probably are aware of this. But people are lacking uh, belief in, in science. Uh, not science in, in uh, science as a whole because science has been wrong so many times and then there's excuses for it and everything else. Just like any, everything. When people are in control of it, you know, there will be, there will be, there will be wrongness. <laughs> uh, but what science doesn't consider, it's starting to consider it, but dear God, it's so slow. What we knew tens of thousands of years ago, which the cave people knew tens of thousands of years ago about quantum physics and what have you, science is just barely now starting to barely grasp. It's uh, sad, but they're finally getting it somewhat, and it's changing the whole scheme of things. Follow anything that has having to do with astrophysics, and they will tell you um, that things do not react according to Newtonian physics, as we've known it for many years, and we've always said that everything responds to Newtonian physics, that which we know about three-dimensional world, that sort of thing. I know I'm going off on something here. We're going to change gears here in just a second. But, um, but yes, there you go. But trust me, Paul, I came to this the very, very long way, the very, very scientific, analytical mind way. Trust me, I am definitely that. Um, but what I've found is that there's a whole something else that's out there that science has such a hard time explaining because they can't, because they're trying to box it up and it cannot be boxed up. They, oh, they dear, they got, they want to do it so badly so that they can put a patent on it or do whatever they want to do with it, but that's not how it works. 
Okay, sorry to go off on that, uh, but there's a lot of great stuff out there if we don't close our minds off to it. And music is the same way. There's something very magical about it. We can scientifically say, well, I know this scale works with this, and if we even break it down to the resonation of each one of those notes as they apply to the scale, if I'm playing an A scale, right, an A, and I play this note in there, well, that note's in the chord, so it's gonna resonate harmonically with this, right? We're not talking about woo-woo, we're talking about harmonics, we're, we're talking about frequency. The frequency of this note is in this chord. So if I play that in my scale, you know, then it's going to sound right. So that's the science part of it, but then there's a whole nother thing that says, why am I doing what am I, why, why I'm doing? Why did I play that lick as opposed to something else? You know what I mean? And, um, we don't, we don't really have answers for that, you know? Okay, um, let's dig into some other stuff. Uh, maybe another question or no? Or do you want to get back into it? Give me a one if you want more questions answered. Give me a two if you want to do more jamming. I, I think I know what the answer is going to be. One more questions, two more jamming. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. In essence, shut your pie hole, Eric, and play. Okay, I will. Here we go. Let's do it. Two, 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 one. All right, sorry for the ones. Sorry. It's all right. We're going to learn something here. Okay. Okay, so let's see. We did. Let's do. I want to. So somebody said. You know, what about the uh, the 69er pattern, right? The, the uh, what, what do we call it? Major, minor, 69er pattern, right? So, you know, really that pattern, or what we call the L7, which uh, Mike and Emmy renamed as the L7. I'm joking. It was, all, of course, we were, we were goofing with that video. Uh, yeah, technically, there is a way that we can do this. But really, we're talking about chords, so... I don't want to mix those two for you. It's going to get confusing, but I can show you that there's a really cool thing. In fact, me and uh, uh, Papa were talking about this the other the other day. Um, that that you could play a lick like this. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Like this. Uh, let's see. stay just within the form like that or you could go now you might say well that's the same notes it is but it feels different and feels everything man when you're doing this sort of thing sometimes you will find that the magic comes out when you try a little something different when you try the fingering a little different or something you know what I mean so don't be afraid of doing that and maybe we'll do that for this one so if you see me slide down, I'm sliding down on the fifth string, you know? And I like this one too. But we're using the standard pentatonic, B minor pentatonic. So for this one, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be sticking to only strings three, four, five, and six, okay? Here we go, here we go.
it's the same on the acoustic. Same thing, that's why I'm doing it lower. in my head, yeah. more complex. in your ear. strings one and two. Okay, so Zenith, can you use the minor pentatonic for improvisation? You can if you know how to move it for major and minor. So Zenith, watch, search your guitar sage pentatonic search your guitar sage major pentatonic. Or actually, just search your guitar sage pentatonic and watch all my pentatonic videos. I don't have a ton of them, but probably less than 10. But you're gonna get some reiteration of some things. You're not gonna waste your time with them. You understanding how to use the pentatonic indeed is gonna be very helpful. So yeah, you can use the, ma the minor pentatonic form for major or minor, but you have to know how to retrofit it for, for minor. I mean, for major, I should say. Basically, if it's minor, you play it like standard. Well, in this case, we're here, we're at B minor, so I'm playing. If it were major, we play the same exact form, but we start on our pinky. So there's a different place in the neck. 
So here's the B, and I play minor like this. If it was major, I'd play it like this. If it were minor, I think I saw another question there. Mm, okay. What, what else? Oh, I know what I was going to tell you is this. Notice that like a lot of these licks that I'm showing you guys, I'm playing them on two sets of strings. I'm playing on three sets of strings of two. So... <laughs> That's what I'm saying. If you play a lick on strings one and two, you can also play it on strings three and four and also play it on strings five and six. If you don't know how to do that, watch my video on the adjacent string trick. It's a longer version of it, right? I just showed it to you. And if you didn't get it there, you're like, but I didn't get it. I know. Well, then I have a longer video for you to, to reiterate it over and over again for you. Watch that. Adjacent, search your guitar stage, adjacent string trick. A D J A. Scent um, trick <laughs> adjacent is it C E N T or S C E N T? I don't know. Adjacent, uh, I think it's just C E N T A D A D J E C E N T. Anyhow, if somebody knows that video, you could you could put it in the link here. By the way, any ninjas that want to do that, when I talk about a video like that and I say, hey, this particular video, if you want to open up another tab and be the hero of the show and drop it into the, the chat, that would be very helpful. Other people would really appreciate that. Adjacent string. No, not adjacent string. Adjacent string. So like this, right? <laughs> Same thing. Any, anything that you do, just move it down, okay? Uh, if it's on strings one and two, you can do it on three and four, you can do it on five and six, okay? Also, understand my springboards technique, right? Just search your guitar stage springboards or someone will drop the link in here, okay? Make sense? And so that's what I'm doing. A lot of times if I'm playing licks, I'll go, okay, well, I got that. I'm going to take that little bit there and I'm going to bring it over here and noodle with it a little bit there. So... <laughs> changed it up every time, but I'm also seeing the shape there every time, and I'm just kind of giving it a little variation, okay? When you do this, you know, it's kind of like, um, gosh, what could we, could we compare it to? It's kind of like, I, I don't know, terrible analogy, but like maybe like if you were walking out on ice, not that you ever want to do this, but like you would, you'd kind of put your foot out there and you'd tap a little bit and you'd go up and you'd tap your foot out a little bit. Okay, it's not broken and you walk. You walk, you tap your foot. That's kind of what you're doing here with these licks is you're, you're feeling your way a little bit. Does that make sense? Okay, let's, uh, let's keep going. Now here is another thing I would do is I would take this B, because I know you guys want to keep playing, and I'd bring that B down here. And I've got a whole nother chord that's based around my A minor chord, or maybe my B minor chord. By the way, when you're playing a chord, automatically all those notes within that chord. If this is B minor, we're in the key of B minor, then all the notes in the B minor chord would work. Wow, look at that. One, two, three, four, five, six notes out of the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So more than half of the notes of the B minor pentatonic are right in the B chord. Those are the chords, those are the notes for our B minor chord. And look, here's our B pentatonic scale.
okay, right there within the chord. So the same thing, if we move this down here, we automatically have this in another shape. I like that too, that little arpeggio. Even if they are not in the B minor scale, what I'm telling you is they will be, Jim, they will be in the B minor scale. Any note that's in the B minor chord will be in the B minor scale. Any notes that are in the G major chord will be in the G major scale. Any notes that are in the F sharp minor chord are going to be in the F sharp minor scale. Does that make sense? All the notes that are within the chord definitely will be in the scale, not the other way around. There's going to be some extras in the scale. Make sense? But if you really needed to needed to go with, with some definitive notes, what, what us guitar players or musicians call the sweet notes are the notes within the chord, right? Dude, this is what we've been doing the whole time. So if I go... We're ending on that note. That's the sweet note. That's why it sounds... Here are the notes in the chord. They just sound great. Here's another B major right here. Minor, a B minor arpeggio. Those are the notes right out of the scale, out of the chord. sound I'll use it sometimes but to me it's like okay arpeggios 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 like it just screams arpeggios if you do it that way so uh, so I like to just give it a little bit of a touch you know what I mean you know how like somebody gets a new I don't know a new toy or a new a new pedal a new pedal us guitar players we get a new pedal and we're like reverb 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 oh, I love reverb oh. yeah I love reverb yeah and we're just all of a sudden, we're all about the reverb, and it just sounds like poopy, right? Because we're just all about reverb, 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 or, or, or ah, I got a, oh, I got my, my vibrato happening, you know, and you're using it for everything. So it's like, in the same way, we could do this with notes. We can overplay them. So you want to use them, you know, use these little tricks and little cliches, if you will, as spices that you might use just for a little bit to make something taste good. You know what I mean? If you use too much of it, and eh, it's probably not gonna taste so good. So, okay, so here we go. So let's, um, so someone's saying play it all over the neck near, near the head. So this is the B minor chord, right? So, or, in fact, I had a song when I was a teenager uh, that was in A minor. It's called Because of You, and the song starts off with that big A minor, and I went, that was my first lick. And I'm using the B minor chord right there, but I'm playing it individual notes. That note's not in the scale, that not in the chord, but I put it in there to embellish it just to give it a little. But that is the chord right there. So the rest of the band was hitting this, and I was good playing. And I resolved it on the A again. Perfect. Makes sense. So same thing with the B minor here, okay? Now the other thing we can do is we can use double stops, right? Uh, for more information on that, search your guitar stage double stops. If you're inside of UGS, you know that I have a whole course on double stops. And most of the stuff when I'm telling you, okay, go search for this one video on YouTube, I typically have a whole course for it inside of UGS, okay? I'll create a whole course and then I'll typically drop a video on YouTube. Uh, for those folks that can't afford UGS, then they have some, some information that they can use too. But double stops. You know, we could do like... Whoop, hold on here. Whoops. Here we go, like...
fun little thing where I go. So you can do all sorts of stuff with that, but um, let's let's stick around more to this uh, portion of the neck here, okay? Here we go. Let's do, uh, uh, we're in a, a new part of the neck. We've done one, two, three parts of the neck. Let's go to a fourth part of the neck here, okay? And again, this is one of, another one of my favorite forms here. You've probably seen that one. It's another form of the pentatonic that looks very similar to form one. Which chord notes to use with double stops and solos. Anything within the scale. Anything within B minor scale. So when I'm doing this, that's exactly what I'm doing is I'm staying right there within the scale. Okay, so, but we're gonna stick to some simple bits here, okay? Ready? You should be in the second position, but you're gonna see me come up, bump up to the third position. Second position is when our first finger's behind the second fret, uh, third positions with our fingers behind the third fret. So when someone says position, that's what they mean. They just mean the first fingers behind that fret and all the other fingers will play respectively. Cool? So, just like we did this, uh, uh, it's the same thing, just octave lower, okay? So, Here we go. You ready? I, I sprung that one on you. Sorry about that. Let's do this, okay? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, we'll get going in a minute here. I just think this is interesting. The world, the French made mayonnaise and the guillotine. The guillotine, actually. The guillotine. Isn't that interesting? I think that's very interesting. The world. Thank you, the world. So much for that. Does you just have a section on electric guitar? Indeed, it's got over a thousand videos, so it's got a few things on electric too. <laughs> it's got a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, okay? So we're in second position, a la, but we're, I mean, uh, also the third position, okay? So here we go, you ready? I'm gonna do this one a bit. You might see me shift a little bit. Remember, if you get lost, it's okay. Do with what you know, okay? Here we go. It's going to look like this. Okay, that's... I'll tell you what. I'm only... I'm only going to stick to strings two and three. We're going to make it nice and simple. So... On string three, we're gonna play frets two and four, and on string two, we're playing frets three and five. Okay, so we have to shift up for that. We did this yesterday. Look, notice how I'm shifting. Here I go, I get, I get done with my phrase, starting to move my first finger over, I'm shifting, and I'm playing the rest of my riff, and I'm, I get done with that string, and, I, and I'm moving my finger over. That takes practice, obviously, right? Okay. Crisp, 77. Thank you, my friend. Great value. Thanks again, Eric. You're so welcome, Chris. Thank you so much. So kind. Here we go. Here we go. You ready? Ready? Here we go. It's going to go like this. Three, four, one, two, three, four. This is Eric's time to play. Now it's your turn, your turn, your turn. You're the rock star. Here we go. Now it's my turn. Get ready. tells you. It doesn't mean you're doing it right. Just go for that, though. There is no right in art. Okay, 
Alright, here we go. Watch this. again. We did this earlier, right? Same notes, right? Octave up. that which is how I'm getting that sound watch and I'm hammering that guy right these two are ringing out exactly what I'm doing here either.
pulling off there. I know that's fast, but okay, we're pulling off from 12 to 10, and then playing 12 on the next string. Or you could just do it. You could do it half that speed. Maybe like this. Yeah, it's called legato. Yep. but you get the idea. Okay, beautiful. Um, let me let me address a couple folks here. Al, thank you so much. Great attitude here. Love how we started today. It was out of my comfort zone. That's okay. Uh, could not keep up with you with the vamp nor the thumb picking today. That's okay because that was more of a technique thing. And so like I can show you something, but the technique has to come with practice, right? So that's okay. But maybe tomorrow. I will. If not, then the next day. Indeed, Al. That's the exact. That's that's it. Hendrix didn't become Hendrix until he started playing like he did, and that took a long time for him to do that. Same thing with any great guitar player. So, Al, you've come to the right place. You're in the. You've got the right mindset. Boom. Indeed. Um, and you know, here I, I kind of threw a curveball at you. I'm doing that because we, you know, if we have 600, 700 people watching. It's like we got some pros and we got some intermediates and we got some uh, beginners. And so I, I've got to spice it up a little bit for everybody. And again, you don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. You can do something else. As long as you're sticking within that scale, that little hole there is for you to have fun and noodle away and come up with your own thing. Uh, it may be exactly what I'm doing. It may be a version of what I'm doing or it may be something entirely different, okay? So Al, thank you, and thank you for the donation. Gary, uh, Claude Felter, hop, um, hope this helps, Eric. My wife and I just will not eat next week. Now, Gary, don't do that to me. Come on, man. <laughs> Gary, thank you so much. So kind of you. Uh, do not give me your last $20, please. Okay, beautiful. Thank you so much. Uh, Frank, another great day. Thank you, folks. Beautiful, super, super kind. Folks, if you feel like you're not getting this, okay, if you feel like you are not getting this, there's a few basics that you need to know, okay? And I got those for you at the Unstoppable Guitar System standard. It's the third link below this video. So like, literally, I'm looking at it right now. Third link below it, the description. Click on the description there, and you'll see it's this free ebook and lessons. The third link below, there's a free ebook for you. Uh, subscribe. There's a subscribe button in there. Uh, the third one below, there's 30 free lessons. Eric, why do you give away 30 lessons? Well, because when you hit a certain level of folks who you're working with, you cannot get to all the questions. It's like impossible. It's not impossible, but I would have to not have a social life, or which I don't have much of anyhow, but I would not be able to spend time with my family and all the rest building videos for you and all. So I've got to make a path for you that you can adore, like leaving my door open to my home and saying, go in there, have fun, just don't mess the place up, but have fun and you know, leave the key when you leave or keep coming back, whatever you want. Uh, and this is cool that we can do this online because it helps a ton of people. So take advantage of that, friends. The third link below is literally the 30 plus, now it's 30 plus because we threw a few extras in there, lessons that will absolutely help you to understand the guitar, the basics of the guitar. Trust me, there's stuff in here you don't know because I got folks that are going in here that are advanced players that get in there and they say, I cannot even believe that someone didn't show me this or that or the other thing. I know, same way, same thing. That's why I developed the course the way that I did because my teachers didn't teach me those things and I said, why didn't they teach me that? Because me, after teaching like 10,000 one-on-one, over 10,000 one-on-one lessons, uh, started realizing, well, this guy needs to have this thing before he has this. Why is, Why are they just throwing a scale at him right away? He doesn't even know what that is. Thank you so much, uh, UGS Pro, every, worth every penny. Thank you so much, whoever, whoever said that. For those of you who, who, who are beyond that and you've gone through 
Trust me though, please go through those first 30 lessons. Don't assume that you know this. I don't care if you're playing in, in a, you know, I don't care if you're Dave Grohl, okay? And I love Dave Grohl. If, you, if you're Dave Grohl and you're watching this, still go through the 30 lessons, okay? Go through those first. And then if you, it, once you exhaust those and you want to delve in more and you're like, Eric, I love this call and response. We have a whole call and response section, a whole course within a course inside of UGS. We have a whole thing called minimalistic blues inside of UGS, which brings some of this stuff in here too. We have a whole blues primer, which is licks from your favorite stars and how they apply them. And you're going to see the same shapes come up every single time. You're learning vocabulary from the very best from Jimmy Page, from Jimi Hendrix, et cetera, et cetera, okay? That's the blues primer. Then there's also the, um, the uh, blues mastery course, right? We have the beginner section up there right now. All of these things will absolutely help you with everything that we talked about today, even if you don't like blues. So my friends, you know what to do. Uh, get into UGS today, at least the free one. Please, please, please get in the free one, okay? Thank you so much for all the kind donations, my friends. We're gonna do this again tomorrow and Friday. You're gonna get this, I promise. If you stick this out, you're gonna get this. Okay, the only thing that you're lacking to get you from here to there is the practice part. Love you guys so much. Thank you, thank you for the kind donations and the beautiful questions today. You guys rule. I will see you tomorrow. Bye. Thank you to my crew. Thank you, Jason, Emmy, and Mike.